number 10, King Henry the First. We've all been there. Mostly on holidays where the food was just so good, we couldn't stop eating, we got so full, we wish we could die. I personally could talk about food for hours. I have a 10 minute limit with my boyfriend because uh, otherwise it just gets out of hand. True story. What is also a true story is that King Henry the First died from eating too much of his favorite thing. Henry loved a medieval delicacy called lamprey pie, a jawless giant leech like fish that was like sweetened with syrup. It was really gross and weird. But he loved it. He died at Lyons La Forêt near Rouen, Normandy in December 11th. 35 CE. He was supposed to go hunting, but had eaten so much lamprey pie that he fell sick with food poisoning. His chronicler, Henry of Huntington, said that he died due to a surfeit of lamprey. He wanted to have his body taken to Reading, which was a monastery he founded with 200 monks. They had to wrap his body in cowhide, cover it in herbs, scented oil, and salt, and remove his organs in order to preserve him for the journey. The man who removed his brain reportedly died due to a strong, pervasive stench. So not only did the king die, he took someone else down with him. Number 9, King Alexander. And no, this is not about Alexander the Great, different guy. Though he did die mysteriously as well. Maybe we'll cover that in part 2 if it so pleases you, let us know in the comments. I'm actually talking about Alexander who was king of Greece for a while in the 20th century. He ruled for all of 3 years until he died, tragically, after being bit by a monkey. Yep. That's true. Yes, a monkey. Not a tiger, not a lion, a crocodile, or a hippo. A monkey. Sadly, this is his legacy. This is all people remember of him. <laughs> he took up the throne after World War I after his father abdicated because he was seen as pro-German. After the Allies won, a political platform called Great Greece began. Their aim was to capture the Ottoman Empire and seize all of their land. They invaded Turkey, but Alexander was fated for another destiny. He was visiting the Royal Gardens on September 30th, 1920, and was strolling along with his dog. They came across a Barbary macaque monkey and his dog attacked. The king rushed forward to separate them, but the monkey had friends. Another monkey rushed forward to protect his buddy and bit the king in the leg, which later became severely infected. Doctors acted too late to remove the leg, and so he died three weeks later from sepsis. He was only 27, and he was remembered because he died from being bit by a monkey. Number 8, Phalaris. What goes around comes around. Despite the actual death being very dramatic, it does have a kind of poetic justice to it. Phalaris was referred to as the tyrant of Agragas Sicily. This guy made cruelty look like an art form. He was known for punishing his victims by putting them into a bronze bowl that he would heat with fire beneath. Yes, I'm talking about the brazen bull, a hollowed out bronze bull that would transform the cries of its prisoner into the bellows of a bull as it slowly roasted to death. Cruel entertainment. The first person to be punished was allegedly the designer of the contraption himself. He gained power after taking on the responsibility of building a temple of Zeus. He armed his workers and seized power, but they would soon all regret it. A man named Telemachus eventually overthrew this horrific ruler, and you guessed it, he was thrown into the very bull he used to unalive countless people. Ouch. Number 7, Humayun. Humayun was one of the Mughal kings of the Mughal Empire who faced a lot of political strife during his reign, from his brothers and outside enemies. But in 1555, he finally won back Delhi and recovered a throne once lost to him. The whole kingdom cheered him on, with crowds lining the streets to welcome him home. After everything he went through, he was right to party. Despite his brothers being a huge reason as to why he was kicked off the throne in the first place, his father on his deathbed was like, dude, you can't kill your brothers, so he had to forgive them but blinded them so they could never become king. But his victory wouldn't last long. He died in the most unpredictable way. He was walking up to the tower towards his library, arms full of books, when he tripped and fell. He fell so hard and fast that he fractured his skull, and thus was the end of his legacy. Number 6, Sato. This is probably one of the darkest ones that I have ever read. It's horrendous, uh, but it's also like, uh, does the crime match the punishment? We don't know. The Crown Prince Sato of Korea was known to be quite the terror. He had a terrible relationship with his father growing up, who was also abusive and bullied and tore him down since birth, which definitely led to his cruel behavior later in life. However, the things he did, still inexcusable. Sato was prone to violent outbursts and his subjects knew him to be a cruel violator, bully, and even took the lives of some of his servants with his own bare hands. His father got to the point where he had to figure out a way to remove him as his successor. The boy turned into such a horrendous figure, his parents weren't so great either, mind you, that his mother, his own mother, condemned him to death. Now they could have hung him, they could have done anything other than this, 
but this is what they did. There are a lot more humane ways to take someone's life, but did they do any of them? No. Instead, they locked their own son into a rice chest for eight days until he suffocated to death. Once he was gone, the chest was open. Rough way to go. Number five, William the Second. William the Second was the third son of the great William the Conqueror. As we know from the first video, he also died in an anticlimactic yet explosive way. It was only fitting that his son died in a similar fashion. However, his death was a drop more menacing. There were some creepy things behind it. On August second, my birthday. In 1100, King William II was on a hunting trip in New Forest. He was attended by a few people, one in particular was named Walter Tyrell. Tyrell wasn't a huge fan of the king and there were some musings as to whether he was employed by uh, William's other brother. We'll see. William got in his sight a stag, took aim, and fired. He didn't kill it, but injured the animal and in his excitement ran towards it. Walter Tyrell stayed back and took advantage of the situation and just went right into his heart. He strung his own bow and struck the king right in the heart. He fled immediately and was able to escape. When the rest of the party discovered him, they too fled in an attempt to protect their own interests. It was left to the countrymen to ferry the king to the cathedral for his burial because actually it turns out people weren't a huge fan of him, to be honest. Number four, King Adolf Frederick. Last time we talked about one of the King Henrys dying from a surfeit of lamprey, but he wasn't the only king to eat himself to death. Spoiler alert. King Adolf Frederick, the king of Sweden, had no way of knowing as he sat down for a meal on Shrove Tuesday Day, the night before Lent in 1771 that it would be his last supper. He was just hoping for a good time. Lots of people loved him as king. He was a big part of the age of liberty during which civil rights for civil people increased. It was his parliament that saw the first legislation supporting freedom of the press and freedom of information get passed. But that night, the night before Lent, Frederick had a meal that included lobster, caviar, kippers, sauerkraut, boiled meats and turnips. Surely enough to more than satisfy the average man, but he washed it down with champagne and semlas, a decadent dessert. He ate 14 of them, on top of everything else, plus a bowl of warm milk, cinnamon, and raisins. That same day, he had such severe indigestion that the king died that day. Number four, a deadly throne. Metaphorically, a throne can be deadly. Anyone who takes up that much power immediately has dozens of targets on their back. But imagine if it was the throne itself that killed you, literally. Bela I of Hungary did everything he could to get onto the throne. His father, Prince Vazul, had to rebel against his own father to get the throne, though instead he was captured and blinded. So Bela and his siblings fled until his eldest brother successfully seized the crown. As per tradition in Hungary, the crown was supposed to be passed from brother to brother, but instead, Bela's brother's son was named heir. So Bela organized an army in Poland, marched on Hungary, killed his brother on the throne, and took up his reign. He actually accomplished much in his reign, including crushing a pagan rebellion and asserting Hungarian independence. But then, in 1063, as Bela was walking up to his throne in front of a bunch of officials and sat down, the whole throne collapsed. The accident left him severely injured and he died from his injuries later on. His throne literally killed him. Number three, Valyrian. The words molten gold and Game of Thrones evokes a specific image for those who have seen the show, but did you know that they may have been inspired by the real life death of Roman Emperor Valyrian? Many rumors as to how Emperor Valyrian actually met his fate kind of range, but either way, it wasn't a good end. According to Lactantius, Persian King Shapur I captured Valyrian in battle and tormented him without mercy. He used him as a footstool, mocked him, flayed him with straw, but the most vicious was the rumor that he met his end by having molten gold poured down his throat. Another is that he was just kept in imprisonment until he eventually faded away into nothingness. His own son didn't even try to rescue his father after he was captured due to humiliation, but also because he was trying to hold Hold back a rebellion. What officially happened to the emperor we may never know, but whatever it was, wasn't good. Wasn't good. Number two, Georgi Doza. This is 
definitely the most brutal on the list. So warnings ahead. This dude was literally torn to shreds by people. I wish that was a metaphor, but it's not. Georgi Doza was a Transylvanian nobleman who led a Hungarian peasant rebellion against their lords. He went down in history as both a criminal and a Christian martyr. He was appointed by Pope Leo X to lead a crusade against the Ottoman with an army of 40,000 volunteers, mostly peasants. The nobles failed to supply the crusaders with what they needed and soon the peasants began to revolt against the nobles. Doza agreed with their grievances and organized a massive rebellion that led to all out war against the nobles. Noble manors were ransacked, nobles were tormented and unalived, but soon the aristocracy began crushing back the rebellion and 70,000 rebels were tormented to death. But Georgi got it the worst. He was first forced to sit in a hot chair with a hot crown fixed upon his head, and then nine of his followers who were starved before this were forced to, um, well, let's just say, make a meal out of him. Yeah, not good, not good, we don't like that. Number one, William the Conqueror. Just recently, I went to see one of my favorite comedians, Eddie Izzard, and through her show, I learned that William the Conqueror exploded. <laughs> he exploded! I couldn't believe it, so I had to look it up, and yup, it's true, folks. We have not one, but two people on this list that exploded internally. William ate as much as he conquered. Not only was he a glutton for land, he was also for the finer things in life, the finest foods, and the spoils of war. As a result, the Duke of Normandy grew in impressive size. In 1087, while riding his horse, it reared unexpectedly, and due to his size, he was unable to balance, and the saddle pushed so hard into his abdomen that his intestines were punctured. Doctors didn't have the means to perform surgery due to his size and their tech, so eventually the king succumbed to his injuries, dying six weeks later. Six weeks? That's a long time. But it doesn't end there. Oh no! He was so disliked that his corpse was abandoned until a wandering knight took on the deed. By the time his body finally arrived in Cannes to be buried, it had been weeks. The bacteria festered in his intestines, filling his body with putrid gas, and as the gravediggers were lowering him into his grave, the hole was too small to fit his now inflamed massive corpse, so they tried to squeeze him in by like jumping and pressing, and in typical Monty Python fashion, he burst and exploded all over the crowd. So no, he didn't die by explosion, but kind of internally, and then again. So. It counts, but what a weird way to go, and what an even weirder way to be buried. Number 10, Rasputin. Okay, technically, not a kingly leader, but he was a religious leader, and the way he died is crazy. If it weren't for the technicality alone, he would probably be number one. Bold statement, I know. It took everything for this dude to die. He was the Russian Tsarina's favorite, but people thought he was the Antichrist. Just to prove such a claim, on June 29, 1914, a courtesan named Guseva gutted him in the belly until she was satisfied. Once she'd done the deed, she stepped back and proclaimed, I have killed the Antichrist. So there you go, people believed it. But they made another attempt on his life. On December 16th, 1916, Rasputin's enemies tried to kill him once again. This time, they laced the cake with enough cyanide to kill five grown men. But Rasputin was fine. No reaction whatsoever. What the heck? Frustrated, a man named Yusupov shot him several times and then left him for dead. He returned later to fetch the body, but instead he found a bloody and angry zombie Rasputin. As Rasputin was chasing him, another noble shot him and this time he died? I don't know. To make sure they threw him into the river. After his body was recovered, an autopsy revealed he had water in his lungs, meaning the man was still alive before he drowned. After burying him for a time, they dug him up to burn his body, and while he burned, he appeared to sit up in the flames, though this is most likely due to the fact that they didn't cut his tendons, so it was just a result of like him shriveling up. But still, took a lot of tries, my man, took a lot of tries. Number nine, King Charles VIII. If you haven't learned yet to take care of head injuries, then you need to take first aid because that's like the number one rule. There ain't no room to mess around, anything could happen. Take Charles VIII for example. He was the king of France in the late 15th century and became king at just the age of 13. Unlike his conniving father, he was described as pleasant and likable. Charles the Affable, so he was called. But in his 28th year, the king would face his demise in a way no one suspected. In a tennis 
court of all places. He was really keen to catch a match and as he was rushing to watch it he knocked his head on a door frame really hard. He got up and said he was fine and enjoyed some of the game, but halfway through he collapsed. Physicians requested he not be moved for fear of increasing his injury, so they made a makeshift bed in the stands where he spent his last hours of life. He died on a tennis court of all places. Number 8. King Barbarossa. Fate was laughing man. Fate was freaking laughing. Had Holy Roman Emperor Frederick Barbarossa managed to join Richard the Lionheart for his crusade, it would have most definitely turned out differently. Barbarossa was legendary for his skill in battle and military expertise. He was one of the most highly feared leaders in the crusades with a ferocious army behind him. But on June 10th, 1190, fate would intervene. He was leading his troops into Turkey on their way and came across a river they had to cross. His men recommended that they find a bridge to cross instead, but Barbarossa was confident that they could cross it on horseback. He rode his horse into the waves, but his horse wasn't strong enough to withstand the current and Frederick's metallic form because he was wearing a lot of armor. It was his armor that ended up dragging the two beneath the depths. After his death, his army completely fell apart because they panicked and they never made it to the Holy Land, but this guy literally got dragged underwater by the weight of his armor. That's how he died. Peace. Number seven, Anne Boleyn. The second wife of King Henry VIII, yes we have a few on this list. She was found guilty of treason and she had been charged with having sexual relationships with five others, including Lord Rochford, aka her brother, George Boleyn. Yeah, the uh, ancient days were a little bit odd. She had also apparently had relations with Sir Henry Norris, the king's close friend. And when I say close friend, I mean he was the groom of the stool, so they were tight. He literally would wipe his so on top of this, Anne was also found guilty of conspiring to kill her husband. Now it's since been proven that these crimes were a bunch of rubbish basically. Anne wasn't even present when these events went down. She was still recovering from the birth of her daughter, future Elizabeth I, so there's no way in hell she was fooling around with the groom of the stool in October 1533. All five guys involved were executed on Tower Hill in May 1536, and then two days later, Anne joked about her little neck before being taken out with a sword as well. There wasn't even a coffin for her burial. So Somebody had to go and get an old elm chest from the tower armory. They used a chest to bury her body near her brother, Lord Rochford. A chest. Horrible. That's so horrible. Number six, Mary Queen of Scots. If you're a murderino, this one's pretty juicy. Listen up. Back in 1565, Mary was determined to take the throne for herself. When Mary was just six days old, her father, King James V, had passed away, so she ascended to the throne. She was about to marry the King of France in 1558, but he passed away, so she returned to Scotland as the country's monarch. Her next plan was to marry her cousin, Lord Darnley, so now if something were to happen to Elizabeth, Mary would be yet again lined up for the throne. That cousin ended up dying in a random explosion, and then years later, in 1568, Queen Elizabeth had welcomed Mary after she fled to England. So Mary was close, but now what? While Elizabeth had found out that Mary was involved in English Catholic and Spanish plots to overthrow her, so she was then placed on house arrest. Fair, more than fair, more than fair. Cut to 19 years later, 1586, a letter had emerged revealing that Mary was involved in a plot to have her cousin, Queen Elizabeth I, killed. She was then sentenced to death and her head was taken off for treason. History is dark, my friends. Even if you're family, it's, shit gets crazy. Number five, Charlotte Augusta. Princess Charlotte Augusta of Wales lost her life in 1817. And when I say ancient, this is probably the most recent that I'll go, because I know ancient means way back. I gotcha. But I have to include this one, because as far as royals go, she was loved at this time. She ended up falling in love with Britain's Prince Leopold, but a year and a half later, she died giving birth. She was healthy at the time. She was only 21 years old when this happened. Charlotte was lined up to be the queen one day, and historical accounts say that the doctors here were at fault. Charlotte's tragic passing had vendors running out of black fabric. That's how rock the public was right after this. Just massive displays of grief. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Was this a doctor conspiracy or just classic medieval times? It's the olden days. We can't really do as much. Let us know. Number four, Catherine Howard. Queen of England from 1540 to 1541. Such a short amount of time, but why? Being the fifth wife of King Henry VIII, cousin to Anne Boleyn, referred to by King Henry as his rose without a thorn, he just gave her all the gifts and she was just 19 years old. Sounds great so far, but you know, because of his list, things won't end up well. Their marriage didn't even last a year until rumors, not letters, or eyewitnesses, 
rumors started spreading about infidelity. There was a small amount of evidence that suggested that she had been romantically involved with somebody beforehand, so a jealous mad king got jealous and mad again. Shocker. You had me at fifth wife, I don't know. She was executed for adultery and treason at the Tower Green on February 13th, 1542. Number three, Martin of Aragon. People didn't initially get excited when Martin of Aragon took the throne over Aragon, Valencia, Sicily, Sardinia, and Corsica, but he was later referred to as Martin the Humane, so he wasn't that bad, I guess. But no one would have guessed he would die the way that he did. Martin, like some other kings we know, also had an unhealthy appetite. Apparently, Joey from Friends could have died in that one episode of Friends where he tried to eat a whole turkey because Martin took on eating an entire goose by himself and actually did it. Something about the goose didn't agree with him, and soon he retired to bed with frightful indigestion. He called for his jester to entertain him while he was ill, but the jester took a long time to get there. When he finally appeared, he told what would be the world's deadliest joke. When asked where he went, the jester replied, in the next vineyard, your majesty, where I saw a young deer hanging by his tail from a tree as if somebody had punished him for stealing figs." Unquote. Apparently this was so funny, Martin laughed for three hours until he died. So yes, he quite literally laughed himself to death. Number two, Cleopatra. I would be very surprised if anyone watching this video doesn't know who Cleopatra is, but in case you don't, here it is, here you go. Cleopatra was one of, if not the, most famous pharaoh to come out of ancient Egypt. She has inspired countless plays and movies surrounding her rule, her beauty, but most notably, her love affairs with Caesar and Mark Antony. Her death is for sure up there with fictional Shakespearean characters Romeo and Juliet. Mark Antony was Caesar's general who fell deeply in love with Cleopatra. Antony had first met the young, silver-tongued, charming, and scholarly queen when she was young and involved with Caesar. After Caesar's assassination, though, she was wide open, quite literally. The two had a passionate, at times messy, and later tragic love affair. Cleopatra at one time faked a suicide to try and bring back her lover from danger, but upon finding out, Antony fled to her only to make an attempt on his own life. He died in her very arms, the queen retreated with her servants to her mausoleum. There, along with her servants, she let an asp clamp on her wrist to take her life. This is the tale, but with no corpse to evaluate, and lots of legend and hearsay. Some say this, though popular, wasn't the true cause of death, but hey, tragedy sells tickets. And last but not least, King Tut. Following the path we are embarking, here we have another mysterious death in ancient Egypt, that of the one, the only, King Tutankhamun. The discovery of his mummified corpse sparked decades of rumor and curses after several people involved with the excavation died mysteriously. But the bigger mystery became how the famous ruler died at so young an age of 19. DNA tests and computerized tomography revealed he was suffering from malaria, a fractured lower leg, congenital deformities associated with inbreeding makes sense because his father and his mother got it on and that's how he came about and so did his grandparents. Egyptians were big into incest. But that wasn't his main cause of death. Other CT scans showed he had a cleft palate, a long head, curved spine, and a fusion of the upper vertebrae. He either died of sickness or a wretched accident given his broken leg. One theory is that he died during a chariot race. Another theory is that he was attacked by a hippopotamus. No doubt archaeologists will still keep searching for the real cause, but will we ever know? I don't know. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Empress of Austria. The saying wrong place at the wrong time couldn't be used more in this case. Empress Elizabeth of Austria, she was sadly taken out by somebody who just wanted to attack a royal. He didn't have anything against Elizabeth per se, this man was an Italian anarchist named Luigi Luceni, and that fateful day, September 10th, 1898, he took the Empress's life. In his own admission, Luigi stated that he had nothing against the Empress on a personal level at all. See, what had happened was he intended on taking the life of the Duke of Orleans, but when Luigi arrived a little too late in Geneva, the opportunity to do so had passed. He looked at a local newspaper, saw Elizabeth, and found out where she was staying, and he waited for her to leave that hotel. That's how easy it was. People are so creepy. 
Keep an eye open. If you're a queen, keep your eyes open. This is scary. Number nine, royal curse. The remains of Polish queens and kings were discovered back in April 1931 in a crypt in Vilnius. Polish researchers didn't even know what they were in for. I mean, a storm had flooded a cathedral and they threw down sandbags to preserve the area, but on the night of April 25th, they had followed the water into this lost chamber that held the remains of Polish kings and queens. These remains, with the crowns still attached, might I add, were from the 15th century. What a find, right? Well, sadly, the remains were all over this flooded tomb now. It wasn't really in one spot. It was horrible. And now after these discoveries, that's when things got really mysterious. Those involved in the findings began to die off in unusual circumstances, one after another. And it happened pretty quick, too. One professor had died after falling down a shaft in his apartment. He had a heart attack. An engineer had died before him as well due to undisclosed medical issues. Okay. Another professor years later who worked in the crypt as well became paralyzed at age 62. A sculptor involved died when untying his shoelace. Just the weirdest way to go out. That's the only details that we know. Just, I don't know, use your imagination I guess. Maybe he fell and hit his head. That's sad. It's tragic. And another professor died in 1936 shortly after visiting the crypt as well. I sure hope this isn't an ancient curse because these guys were trying to preserve their history and avoid the crypt from flooding. Like, I don't know, we need a Ouija board to clear this whole thing up. We were trying to help you with the sandbags. Number eight, Queen Caroline. In a list of unusual ways that people have died, odds are it's going to get a little gruesome, a little messy. After all, that's why you click this video, right? Right? Some ancient queens die natural causes and then history remembers them for their reign. In this case, history remembers Queen Caroline for the way that she died. It was written in an epigram from the 18th century from a poet named Alexander Pope. It, he wrote down, here lies wrapped up in 40,000 towels, the only proof that Caroline had bowels. It rhymes? Like, come on, man, you didn't have to do this. This is horrible. That's like a prank almost. I can't believe somebody was like, yeah, 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 write that down. That's good, that's good. Did it rhyme? Yeah, she'd like that for sure. All right. Number seven, King Richard the Lionheart. Look, we all know I'm on the Richard the Lionheart train because I just finished reading about the Third Crusade. Madness, utter madness, Richard was born for battle. Saladin had never faced nor encountered any warrior like him. They were so equally matched. Saladin was also really awesome. I should do a video about him. Saladin would watch him fight and was in such awe he sent him two of his best horses in the middle of a battle. Because such a man should not be without his horse. He would literally like, like, plow through his enemies like a bulldozer, at times falling ill due to the stench of battle but never succumbing to it. He had so many encounters with death that he seemed to be like invincible, immortal even. Which is why his death is so strange to me and so anticlimactic. He was walking towards a battlement un armored and a vengeful boy took advantage and shot him in the arm with an arrow. Richard jumped on his horse and went to a doctor, but the doctor was terrible at his job, basically butchered his arm and caused him to get gangrene, therefore a death sentence. He had the bowman brought to him and asked him why he was his downfall, and this is where it kind of gets really crazy. The boy replied that Richard had slain his father and brother and that he would accept any punishment he was given. Crazy. Richard was so in awe of the guy that he ordered instead that the boy not be harmed and instead be given enough money to live out the rest of his days happily. Sadly though, after Richard died, people were so bereft that his wishes were ignored and the bowman was punished and killed. So very, very sad, but what an anticlimactic death for Richard the Lionheart, but also what a proud thing to do. Number six, Caracalla. I'm going to try and avoid bathroom humor as much as I can. But feel free to go wild in the comments. Have you ever been in the bathroom doing your business and suddenly your mind starts going and you're like, someone could easily take me out right now, you know? I mean, it's not like you can just stop what you're doing, you know, before hands reach out and grab you beneath the stall and you're like, ah, you know, like what a way to go, right? Exactly. Which is kind of why it's bad form to assassinate someone in that vulnerable space. Poor Roman Emperor Caracalla. I mean, not really, though he gave Roman citizenship to free inhabitants. He, he is considered as one of the most bloodthirsty tyrants in Rome, so not a great guy. His reign is one of the main reasons the empire fell. He made a lot of people angry, let's just say that. In 217, the emperor was preparing for a major campaign and against the Parthian Empire. He was visiting a temple nearby when he was stabbed by a Roman soldier who was allegedly angry with him for not promoting him. While this was happening, he was busy relieving himself on the side of the road and he was just dead. Ugh, bad form. But also, you know, not a good guy. Number five, Queen Caroline of Ansbach. I'm not gonna lie, this is not for anyone with a weak stomach, so be careful. This is not a good way to go. One of history's goriest deaths to be sure. 
Queen Caroline was the consort of George II. She was described as extremely clever, intelligent, strong in character. However, later in life she became overwhelmed with extreme bouts of gout. They became so bad that she had to be wheeled around the castle in an ornate chair. The cause was a strangulated hernia which developed after the birth of her youngest. Eventually the pain became so bad that she couldn't leave her bed. Her womb had ruptured and she was bleeding internally and then, I'm so sorry, her bowels exploded. Exploded. On November 20th, 1737, Caroline passed away, leaving behind this epigram. Here lies, wrapped in 40,000 towels, the only proof that Caroline had bowels. Ugh, not a great legacy. Sorry, girl. Number three, Catherine Parr. When Catherine Parr got a position in Princess Mary's house in 1542, she met King Henry VIII. She was smart. She was 30 years old, so it was a step in the right direction age-wise when it comes to these queens and King Henry. Not that there's anything wrong with marrying somebody younger, that's not what I'm saying, but it's just, well, look at this list. All these people died, spoiler alert. So the older, the better at least. I don't know. She was seen as somebody who could nurse the king in his dying age, so the public liked her. She was the first English queen also to write and publish her own books. Now, come 1543, Catherine gave up her man, Thomas Seymour, to marry the king. The two got married that July at Hampton Court Palace, and from that point on, her beliefs were deemed dangerous. Queen Catherine was a supporter of the English Reformation, and Catherine's religious opponents were plotting against her, and they tried to convince the king that she was dangerous. Her arrest was even planned, everything was kind of going in a bad direction. And then Catherine went to King Henry right away and then asked for forgiveness herself. You know, for pushing her views too far many times before, and he forgave her. Meanwhile, others are losing heads for having relationships. Okay. Her and Henry were married for five years, and then after his death, she married Thomas Seymour just a few months later. And then come September 1548, she died after giving birth to her daughter. The account of her death comes from a lady-in-waiting and friend of Catherine Parr, comes from Elizabeth Tyrant. only her account is fishy because she never liked Thomas Seymour to begin with. She made it seem like Catherine was speaking about her husband in a negative manner when she was dying, and this is the only time in history where that's ever been an idea. So what do you think? It's like broken telephone, but hundreds of years ago. I'm like, I, maybe she was friends? I don't know. Sounds like conspiracy. Number two, Anne of Cleves. Where to even begin here? Okay, this one is sad, man. Anne was right in the middle of Henry's wives. She was married to King Henry for six months, and it was seen as quite strategic in a way. Henry's chief minister convinced him to marry one of the sisters of Germany's Duke of Cleves, either Anne or Amelia. So in order to decide, Henry requested that Hans Holbein travel to Cleves to paint a portrait of each sister. This is like the birth of Tinder right now. I'm not joking, this actually happened. This man compared portraits and then chose Anne because every man praiseth her beauty. She was compared to the silver moon. Yeah, try that on a dating site. I praiseth thou beauty, madam. Super swipe. A treaty was signed and a few weeks later Anne arrived to England. Henry was beyond upset because she looked nothing like she did in her portrait. Yep, real life, this is what really happened. He tried to stop the wedding because of this, but it was too late. They had to follow through and they got married on January 6, 1540. And later accepted the divorce because obviously a divorce was in play after what you just heard. And then she lived as the king's sister peacefully until her death in 1557. Of all the ways to be remembered in history, King Henry made this horrible for Anne. Yeah.